Mind.tv Lozoth, number 79, is said to search among the graves and knows much wise lore. Much wise lore about starting on fire! Oh! Yeah! Well, hello once again and welcome back to you. Nathan Plays Castlevania Symphony of the Night. My name is Nathan and this is Castlevania for the Sony PlayStation. In the previous episode, we... Uh, oh, man. It has been ever so long since the previous episode. What did we do? Let's load up the save file and see where we were. Maybe I can remember then. Okay, what, uh, did we get to the bad ending or was it? No, 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 we went on a collection run. Oh yeah, okay, we got those rings, yeah. All right, so we got the rings, we got a cool green cloak and now we were heading uh, somewhere to do something. Yes, okay, it's all coming back to me now. So a quick shortcut through the Colosseum, uh, not really much to show there because I'm heading back to the clock in the center of the castle. As, uh, as you may recall, the inscriptions of the rings had a, had a hint that was sort of in that direction, so passing through Olrox's quarters or the corner of it, we go through one more stage transition. And we drop down here at the good old clock. So then it's time to go into our inventory. Head over to the equip. We're going to take off our cool rings for the moment. We're going to put on the gold ring and the silver ring. So uh, then this thing happens. The clock mysteriously spins around. Some skulls show up. Well, that's a little bit ominous, I would say. And rather ominously, the clock strikes 13, although you'll notice it's pointed at 6.30, so I don't know what's... I think something's wrong with it. Um, the inscription, where in clock tower, when you put the two rings together, isn't entirely accurate because there is a clock tower and they won't do anything up there. You need to bring it to this clock. Um, when we go down, we find another save point. Very handy. We'll just do that real quick. And over on the other side, why it's a life max up and a heart max up. And then we take the elevator further down. Here we come to an extremely ominous area. This is the dark heart of the castle. Creepy, discordant music playing. Choirs. Alucard? That voice, Maria? I'm sorry, you were right. He has joined forces with the enemy. So it was a Belmont after all. But someone must be controlling him. Whatever we do, we can't harm Richter. But he must be stopped. I know. Well, here. Take these with you. What are these? If you wear these, you can see beyond evil illusions. Thank you. Tis best then if you pray for the soul of your friend. Well, I guess, I mean, I do have some questions about how Maria got down here, but we're going to ignore those for now and head back up the other side. She gave us the glasses. Uh, the holy glasses. I sort of spaced out there for a second while the cutscene was playing. That is what they're called, right? Anyway, so with those, we're going to head all the way back up to the nearest fast travel point, which happens to be on the other side of Lorox's quarters. And we're going to take that up to the top of the castle. The lion, which happens to be the next one in sequence, I think, unless I edited that. Ha! 
so we're gonna head back toward the final confrontation once again with a key difference we have special glasses float up past the ruined stairs they really ought to fix that that seems like a some sort of a safety violation there um, once again, I'm just going to go ahead and throw those on. Seize Beyond Magical Curses. Very nice. And, uh, I didn't remember... I just wanted to make sure that we had actually gotten the, uh, the secret up here. Uh, I couldn't remember from last time, so it was time to just stick my head up here and check that we collected all the stuff that's up in the attic. And it's a good job with it. We looked. There's all kinds of good food and items and things. Change from the spike breaker to the platinum mail, which is actually about the same. And never mind. I'm not going to do that. But the walk armor is actually a little bit uh, stronger. Take a quick look around our options there, and then I think we're going to settle on the walk armor. Or nothing. And this time we're going to remember to quaff a resist holy potion just before walking in, because that was very nice. The fight is going to be pretty similar to last time with one key difference. He's going to be doing a lot of the same attacks. I've been waiting for you. We gotta answer me. Why do is this whole song and dance again? The resurrection of Count Dracula. But then you know you can skip the rest of the dialogue, which I did. So now with the holy glasses on, there is a curious green orb floating around the room. While Al or, uh, Richter is continuing to do his usual attacks, I have a new target. It's that green orb. You can see it's sort of zapping him subtly every so often. That's supposed to be another clue, I suppose. Victor's being a jerk. There we go. You've defeated me, but all is not yet lost. The resurrection of Count Dracula is at hand. <laughs> Well, that was a bit of an odd thing, an entire second castle. Oh. No. What have I done? Thank you, Alucard, for saving Richter. Alucard? The same Alucard who fought alongside my ancestor, Trevor Belmont? That was over 300 years ago. No time for small talk. Is the person who controlled you in that castle over there? Yes. I think so. Maria, take Richter and leave here. I'll finish this. All right. Good luck. And so, um, this is uh, being out of my control right now. We marched over to the other side of the room. You take this neat teleporter. And you end up in that castle over there. Yes, that's right. It is the mid-game shock. Welcome to the Inverted Castle. This is a complete copy of the castle that we just explored, but upside down. Has new bosses, new enemies, new items, uh, new places to explore. I got a brand new map that needs filling in. 
So way, way back in the beginning of this video series, I mentioned that that percentage went a lot higher than you would think it should um, for rooms explored. Yes, it goes well over 100, over over 200, I think, even. So the, some of the secrets are already open. You don't have to find that staircase, but it's really, really good to go down here. Grab some of these things, including the Royal Cloak. Which is kind of a gorgeous blue cape. It is a lovely shade of blue. Has a better constitution and defense stats than my existing cloak, so of course we're going to throw that on. And I mean, being that blue is my favorite color in any case, it's a really nice thing to have. Some more max ups. You gotta understand, finding out about this the first time I played this game blew my mind. Really just rocked my world. That there was basically an entire second half to the game that I had no idea about. Because the first time I played it, I got the bad ending. I thought that was that. And then friends of mine that borrowed me their copy said, no, no, no. You gotta go get the rings. You gotta go do the thing. And kill the orb instead. So I did. And here I ended up. It's a little trickier to get around in some instances, but I mean, I still do have my powers of flight and, and things. Super jump, so that's nice. This face was uh, placed here, and it works the same upside down and right side up. A little bit of a hint if you encounter it in the regular right side up castle. And you gotta remember where all the walls are that you can chip away at and things, because they're, they're back. Here's good old Yorick. Poor guy. Hit him and he leaves his little skull behind there. Actually, I'm going to show you. Hang on a second. We'll grab the things in here. No way, I'll, I'll get you on the way out. Okay. There's a bunch of potions up in this room. These are really nice to have when I remember that I have them. Often I don't, and then I just end up I just languish in my inventory. Just kind of sad. So on the way back out, Yorick kind of kind of kicks his head around. He's got such a cute little animation, such a harmless enemy. And occasionally he runs past it. Sort of goes, whoa, and heads back to find it. But uh, some of the enemies that we'll encounter, I did say they were all new, but uh, some of them are just reskins or, or palette swaps or whatever of the ones from the existing castle, which makes sense. Game memory being a, a, a finite thing and all. But there is quite a lot of new content to explore. And just the novelty of walking around on the roof, you know? So now, the, now some options are open to me. The, um, the right side up castle has a little bit more of a, of a progression, but now I have some choices, and I decide to go left into the clock tower area, the inverted clock tower. First we have to fight this boss. It's, it's kind of dumb. Although honestly, I'm not sure how it took this long in the game to fight a giant bat. I mean, that's like the first boss of Castlevania. Anyway, this is Darkwing Bat. Um, doesn't do a whole lot, except it tries to blow you around. Uh, move slowly. Unconvincing wing effect. Then it dies. And of course starts on fire, because evil burns, as we're learning from this game. It rewards you with uh, something new that's only in the inverted castle. Kind of hovers there. It is the Ring of Vlad. Or Vlad. Vlad. I don't know. It goes under your relics. It's one of five treasures, and it gives you intelligence plus 10. This thing, having it on, gives you a permanent plus 10 boost to your int. And as you see, one of five treasures implies that other bosses will have the remaining four. So, um, some of them are still just going to drop the regular uh, life max up, I think. But, um, this is kind of reason to go seek out the other bosses that are around here. We're going to use the holy water that we picked up to take care of these bomb knights pretty quickly. Their job is to stand there and chuck bombs at you, and then die. You can see that this area has gotten some pretty cool new spiky grinders. And of course this secret in the back corner that was there in the right side of castle. And it gives you a pretty cool moon rod. This is going to be excellent for my Sailor Moon cosplay. It's a rod with lunar markings. And... It looks a bit like that. If you 
do a certain maneuver on the D-pad, it will unleash a bunch of moons, and you are free to yell, in the name of the moon, I will punish you, or whatever. Which I will not do. I prefer my other, uh, my other weapon, so I'm switching back. Moving back through this area, we'll stick to the top, then you have a few different options for paths going through here. I'm probably going to miss some of the secrets on the way through the inverted castle that I got in the regular castle. Just because, you know, my human memory being what it is. Spiky uh, raising and lowering things are a pretty common uh, sort of problem in the Castlevania series as well. It's good to see those again. And then we get to the gears area. But first we're going to take this uh, little detour here. You may recall that there were Axe Knights uh, before. Now there's just nothing. A little bit ominous. There are more cloaked knights zooming around. Trying to ruin your day. Doing an admirable job. You guys are jerks. And they're just going to keep coming. Forget that, I'm out of here. So back into the gears area. Uh, the Medusa heads have been replaced with all uh, stone Medusa heads. In the regular castle, they were blue and yellow. The blue ones just harm you, but don't turn you to stone. These all do, so of course Mirror, the Mirror Curass is going to go back on so that they don't uh, turn me to stone. There's also a zillion of these uh, cloaked knights, and the whole place is just a, just a lot of chaos and pain. Soul steals used judiciously are very, very helpful to clear the way and regain valuable health. And of course, I am a madman, so I'm going to go for all those clicky gears again, and it's it's just a pain, believe me. I skipped over a lot of jumping around and hitting there. Uh, picked up some items, not 100% sure what they do. Um, I got a sunstone, which improves status after sunrise, so that's after about six or seven hours into the game. Um... Which, you know, I'm not there yet. And what was the other thing? It was the... Oh, the life apple. But it heals, but it's for familiar use only. So that's if you have the fairy familiar flying around. That's one of the things that she can use on you when she deems necessary. Again, we're going to skip a big portion of this because it's it's just a... There's a lot of heads and a lot of cloak guys, and it's just a huge pain. Not terribly, terribly exciting. I mean... Extremely frustrating from a gameplay standpoint. You have no idea the headaches this place used to give me. Get a smart potion, a luminous, and a strength potion. Luminous, let's go ahead and check that out real quick, of course. This is a sword forged by elves. And, uh, yeah, it's got sort of a nice range. But really, I'm going to stick with these, uh, the Holy Waters for those, um, knights again. Had to remember to uh, get rid of the Mirror Cuirass, although it is very useful in that one spot. It's not, uh, the best armor ever, and so we're going to switch back to the Walk Armor, which, as I said, lots of times only gets stronger as you, uh, uncover more of the castle, so that's kind of nice. Really means that I should be going up as a bat and clearing out the rest of this room, but meh. Meh. Nice dragon helm in here. And it frightens the enemy and lowers their defenses. Well, that's excellent. It's a little bit less on the uh, intelligence side of things, but that's okay. I got permanent plus 10, baby! I'm not worried. Some of these areas, again, uh, do have to be scaled in bat form. and uh, But it is wild how much of this works upside down. Like, I wonder how much it was intentionally placed or if they just kind of flipped the room and said, oh, this actually still is something we can walk around on. So now we're back to the outer wall of the inverted castle. This is another familiar area. We're going to stop in at this safe point here, and I think we're going to call that a video. We're working our way sort of upward um, over to the library eventually. Um, so, yeah, this is... Uh, I'll show you whereabouts we are in the castle here when I hit the map up in just a second. In any case, uh, it appears I'm not doing that. So thank you ever so much for watching. Uh, thank you for your patience between installments. And as always, we'll see you next mission.